Hi, my name is Chris Woodward, and I'm a developer relations engineer at OranguaDB. Thanks for joining me for this lunch and learn session. Today, we look at combining graph traversals with Orango Search. If you haven't already, be sure to check out the introduction to Orango Search session linked in the description, along with the other Orango Search focused lunch sessions we have done over the last few years. Orango Search is OranguaDB's built in full text search engine that is more than just a full text index. Orango Search offers advanced information retrieval features with built in support for ranking and retrieval using either BM25 or TFIDF. It offers text analyzers to perform powerful transformations to your data. Orango Search views offer a way to perform federated searches across multiple collections, all backed by a fast inverted index and column restore that supports supplying a primary sort order for the documents indexed. If you'd like to learn more about the basics of Orango Search, be sure to check out our documentation or watch some of the other Orango Search videos in the Lunch and Learn series. Over the last year or so, we did since we did the first Orango Search Lunch and Learn session, we have released quite a few Orango Search features. In July 2021, we released OrangoDB 3.8, which introduced the pipeline analyzers for chaining analyzer transformations together. An AQL analyzer that allows you to use AQL queries for an analyzer, geospatial analyzers and functions, approximate count for search query results, and fine-grained control over Orango Search's maintenance threads. In February of this year, we released OrangoDB 3.9, which int introduced a segmentation and collation analyzers, which improve language agnostic text tokenization. We also improved the Orango search experience in the web UI by adding the ability to configure your own analyzers in the UI and improving the view creation process, making it even easier to get started with Orango search. The queries we'll look at today have been put into a Google Colab notebook and gives you access to a temporary tutorial database, which is freely available and you can run for yourself today. No sign up required, and the links are available in the description. We'll be using our trusty IMDb dataset, which contains information about movies and shows their relation to one another via the people who worked on them and the genres. This dataset now also features users and ratings. The Orango Search view we have created links to the IMDB vertices collection. It includes all the fields using the identity analyzer and indexes the title and description with the English text analyzer. Now that we've taken a look at some of the getting started, we can move on to the actual queries. For this example, we're assuming the role of a movie producer who's shopping around for a few directors and actors for their next upcoming movie. We'll do some queries to find directors and actors, and then we'll start narrowing them down by popular or good directors and actors, and then finally find actor directors and actors that have actually worked together in the past in the hopes that they'll be able to make a, a new great movie going forward. To start out with our query, we're looking over our view named V underscore IMDB, and then we're going to do a search with some relevant keywords that we want as far as movie experience. This includes fantasy, alien, sci-fi, galaxy, and we're using our text underscore en analyzer for our search terms, as well as the d dot description. The next thing we do is pass the movie that matches our criteria here to the BM25 algorithm, giving us a nice ranking score that we can sort by. Right now we're keeping our results broad, so we're gonna get the first 75 directors that are relevant. Next, we do our actual graph traversal. Here, we declare vertex edge and path, and we're going on the inbound starting from our movie that we found. From here, we can evaluate all the edges that start from one out. And in this case, the most directly connected vertice will either be a director, actor, or genre node. And so we wanna make sure that the label shows that they directed the movie that we're looking at. Now we can return all the directors that are connected to these movies. Now that we've run this, we can see that we get a list of directors. Now we can move on to finding our actors. The next query that we're going to run is very similar to the original query. We start out with the same query up top, looking for movies that match our search criteria. Next, we start up with our similar graph traversal layout here, 
The main difference this time is that we want to make sure that the labels on the edges are acts in, indicating that we're getting to actors that have acted in the movie that we're concerned with. And then we have an additional consideration of collecting movies based on the actor name. So what we're looking to accomplish here is that we want to group all the movies that we come across and connect them to the actors. So each actor should result in the movies that they have acted in. And that is the next line here. Where we make sure that since we are collecting our results, grouping them, and putting these titles into a variable here, we just want the unique movie titles rather than returning the duplicates. One next step that we do is make sure that the actors have acted in at least one of the movies in our acted in set. Finally, we sort our results by the actor who has acted in the most movies, giving us the most relevant or the most popular actor up top. And if we go ahead and execute this, we can see that we get our results. In this data set, we see that Christopher Lee acted in Star Wars movies, and Star Wars movies show up in a lot of our top results here. All right, now we can move on to our next query, which is actually finding good actors. So we have actors now that have acted in a good number of movies, but this doesn't necessarily mean they did a good job in those movies or that people enjoyed those movies. Since these are Star Wars, I think we can see that this is likely going to show up top, but it really depends on the user ratings in our data set. For this query, we're going to start out just like we have before, getting movies based on our search term, sorting them using our BM25 function, and then moving on to our graph traversal. The difference is this time we're doing a 2.2 graph traversal. This makes it so that we can find movies the actor has acted in. We start out with our movie in our graph traversal, and then we go one hop out to the actor who acted in it. And then finally, we go to the next movie the actor has acted in. This is the reason for these filter statements. They evaluate the edges along the path and make sure that they are connecting to the to other movies. So always having the edge type of acts in ensures that the first connection to our source movie is an actor, and then the next connection from our actor is another movie that they act in. The next line here is to find the rating for all the movies the actor has acted in. This is a simple one hop traversal going inbound to the movie that we have found. And this specific movie is the movie that we got from our prior traversal here. So we evaluate the path and we find the next movie. So the movie in the two position of our vertices. So the first movie or the movie in the zero position would be our start traverse or our start vertex. The next position or the one position would be our actor and the final position or the two position would be the next movie that we're evaluating. Once we have this movie, we can start an inbound traversal on the ratings edges. The ratings edges have the rating stored on the edge. We can take a quick look at this if we peek into the ratings edge collection. Here we can see the rating of four. We can also see that it has a label of rated, a type of rating, and when it was actually rated with a timestamp. Now that we have our ratings, we can collect again, just like we did with our prior actors query, our actor, we can aggregate their ratings, and then finally, we can sort the actors by their average ratings, indicating how much star power or, or how popular, or you could say how good of an actor they are. We'll give this query just a moment to run. This query does take a, a little bit longer as we're doing multiple aggregations across multiple graph traversals. Now that we've run our query, we can see that we get a list of actors along with their average rating. We start out with Kirk Douglas, Cliff Curtis, Derek Luke, Hugo Weaving, and so on. With these actors, we can now see about getting some good directors and see if we can find some good directors and good actors that work together. 
For that, let's go ahead and move on to our good directors query. This query is going to do a similar thing to the one we've seen before. Uh, instead, we're just swapping our label search to directed to indicate that while we're doing our two dot dot two traversal, we still want to make sure that the this is for directors. So again, starting with our movie in the zero position, we want to make sure that we get to the director. So our first vertice after that will be the director. And then we just want to get another movie that this director directed. Finally, again, we'll go ahead and get our uh, ratings for the movie that that director directed. We'll collect that director and the average rating for their movies. And then finally, we'll sort by that rating. As there are a lot fewer directors in our data set, this traversal actually performs a little bit faster. We'll go ahead and execute and get our results. Here we can see that our top director is Stanley Kubrick. And who directed Full Metal Jacket, Fear and Desire, followed quickly by Steven Spielberg. Now we have our directors, we have our actors, and we have a pretty good pattern for finding them. Let's go ahead and move on to actually finding a good collaboration or a fruitful collaboration of directors and actors. For this query, we're going to go ahead and take a look at finding uh, directors and actors that have participated in movies together. The way we'll go about this is starting with our directors, we're going to find movies that they have directed and then find the actors that have acted in those movies. We start off this query just like we did before using our view lookup, where we look across the view for movies that match our search criteria. Finally, we get to our graph traversal. Here, the main thing that has changed is that we've added an additional hop. And the reason that we've done this is to be able to get all the actors of the movies that the director has directed. So the first two filters are just the same, where we are filtering on that the, the edge type or the label of that edge is directed, indicating that we're getting to a director. So since we're starting from our movie, our first hop out would be to our director. So we make sure that gets us to the directed on the directed edge. And now that we're at our director, we can go one more hop out and get another movie that they have directed. And then from that movie, we're looking for all edges that contain the axe in type, indicating that it's connecting to our to the actors of that movie. From here, we can group based on the director and actors of that of that movie. The here we can aggregate the number of movies, making sure that we still get uh, directors and actors that have participated in at least one movie. And then finally, we can make sure that the list of movies that we're going to return in our results is unique. Finally, we can sort by this number of movies so that we get a high value of actors and, and directors that have participated in a high number of movies together. Let's take a look at the results. Here we can see that the top option, Sammo Hung, has participated in six movies. It looks like they participated in it as themselves. Uh, and moving down the list, we can start to get some more interesting results to see um, the different movies as well as the number of movies. So if we were looking to find an actor that had participated with a director in a high number of movies, we have a good starting place. And with that, we'll go ahead and wrap up. Thank you again for joining me for this Lunch and Learn session. And be sure to check out the full notebook with in-depth descriptions and a fully interactive database in the description below. And of course, if you'd ever like to connect, you can find us across all social media platforms and of course, on our community Slack. Thanks again for joining this ArangoDB Lunch and Learn session.